there's no doubt that being in your 50s certainly comes with its advantages and disadvantages. And I want to see you get all of the advantages and the joy that you can in your 50s and 60s. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you five things I want you to think about stop doing in your 50s in order to enjoy your journey until whenever you retire is. Okay, the very first one is I want you to stop neglecting your health. You know, in our 50s, we're still juggling a lot of responsibilities. And oftentimes the thing that, that gets pushed to the side that we don't have time to do, that we say, I'll get to it tomorrow, is taking care of our health. And whether that means going to the gym, whether that means doing some yoga, um, whether that means um, going for a jog, whatever it is, uh, it, it becomes more and more important to make it a priority, not just our physical health, but also our mental health and how are we feeling and how are we doing mentally. So I want you to think about prioritizing your physical health, which again means the gym, but it also means the kitchen and the grocery store, taking the time to shop for healthy foods, to cook healthy foods, um, maybe eating out a little bit less often, just really for the health reasons, uh, as well as some other reasons that can get expensive after a while. But really putting your health first, because if we don't have our health, it doesn't matter how much money we have in our bank accounts. Our health is a lot more important than our wealth. Okay, the number two one is, I want you to think about stop being the bank for your adult kids. And I know this is harsh, and I, I know I may get some negative comments. We love our children, we want what's best for them, and it's so, so easy to help them out when it comes time to buy their first house or when they're trying to buy a car and they find out they're gonna have to pay eight or 10% interest on that car loan and we say, heck, you shouldn't do that. You know, let me give you a little bit of money or even let you borrow some money, um, you know. Unfortunately, there are no loans for you and I when it comes to retirement. They do have student loans. If your child decides to go back to grad school, they have mortgages for buying houses, they have car loans uh, for buying cars, and, and hopefully, you know, your, your, your kids early on are not buying expensive cars. The average car payments uh, for a new car is almost $750 a month, and almost 20% of people with a new car loan are paying a thousand dollars or more a month so you know if if you're still supporting your adult kids uh, i want you to put yourself first i want you to look at at your retirement savings because one of the best gifts we can give our kids is for mom and dad to be financially independent okay the third one believe it or, the third one is i want you to stop skipping your vacation i want you to take all of your vacation and almost half of all Americans do not take their vacation. And For developed countries, we have some of the least amount of vacation time to begin with, and then for half of us not to be taking our vacation. We're missing out on, on, on low-hanging fruit. We're missing out on a lot of fun things that we could be doing. And I know it can be expensive, um, but the older we get, we don't know how long we have, right? And I want you to have all of the adventures. I want you to have all of the excitement. And it's, it's easy to put off adventures for tomorrow. But if you're 50 years old, you know, how many more times do you have that um, you can go on a motorcycle ride with your friend down the coast of California? Or you can do a, one of those uh, uh, biking trips, road biking trips. There's some uh, catered ones uh, that, that you have services and you have a, uh, a side wagon, a, a van that goes alongside in case you get a flat tire and need help. Yes, I know they're not, they're not inexpensive, but I want you to think about you know, how many years you have that you can still do that. There tend to be these buckets of time that we can do things. And I want you to think about what are the activities that maybe when you're 60 is gonna be harder. Maybe when you're 70 would be harder. Or 80, you might not be able to do it. Think through that and put together a list of things that you want to do, but by, you know, what is the best age to do that thing that you would like to do? 
and have that bucket list. If you're married, you and your spouse put it together or you and a good friend put it together and think about what are the things that you'd really like to do while you still have the health, you, you still have the, the flexibility. And that's one of the reasons I want you taking your vacation. But even if you just hang out at home and decompress, you know, the, the world's a stressful place. And unfortunately, with uh, artificial intelligence, I, I think things are going to continue to move fast, faster. It's going to be more stressful for all of us. So at a minimum, I want you taking all of your vacation if, if you can. Okay, number four, I want you to think about stop spending time with, with people that are critical of you. You know, life is short and we all have friends that are critical. We all have friends that after we spend time with them, we don't feel as, as good about ourselves as what we did before we spent that time with them. And, you know, unfortunately, as we get older, we have to kind of view our friends as, as like a garden. And there's some beautiful flowers in, in that garden, and we want to nourish those. But there's also some weeds, and we probably want to start weed. We, start, we want to start removing some of those weeds so that we can fully enjoy our friendships, the time we spend with people. Uh, and just think about that. You know, oftentimes we can be our worst critic, and, and it, it's even worse when other people echo those. You know, all of us have our flaws. All of us have our strengths. Um, and, and hopefully over time we learn to not just embrace our strengths, but we learn to, to come to peace with some of our shortcomings. We, we strive to be as good of a person as we can, but the reality is we all have strengths and weaknesses, and, and we want friends that uphold us. Uh, and, and for your good friends, I want you to spend as much time as you can with them. We probably all have friends that for whatever reason we've fallen out of touch with, and I want to encourage you to, to reach out to those friends because that's the spice of life. That's really where we're going to get a lot of joy. And as we approach retirement and we have more time on our hands, multiple studies have shown that the happiest retirees are the ones that have the strongest relationships. And the time to start building those relationships is before you need them and before you retire. Okay, next one on my list is I want you to stop putting off adventures and, and trips that you'd like to take. So similar to what I was just talking about with vacation, um, but again, this concept of buckets of time in which adventures, which trips would be best to take in which age group, you know, maybe 50 to 55, 55 to 60, or 50 to 60, and 60 to 70, and 70 to 80. But really think through this and, and take some time. And if you want to read a book that will motivate you to do it, it's got kind of an unusual title, but it's called Die With Zero by Bill Perkins. And Bill just encourages us to get as much joy uh, an adventure out of the money that we've saved, out of the sacrificing that we've done. And he argues that the money that we've saved has taken life energy. And, and we want to make sure we get that life energy back. And he would further argue, and I agree with him, that you have less utility, you get less joy from the money as our physical health starts to go away. You know, he would say, you give an extra $100,000 to somebody in their 90s, there's not a lot they can do with that, right? I mean, if they're, if they're struggling to pay the bills, it's gonna give them peace of mind, but they're probably not going on a whitewater rafting trip uh, with that. So anyways, um, and, and then the final one, um, and mea culpa, you know, it, I've been a financial advisor for a while, so I am biased, but I really want you to think about if you're getting close to your 50s, if you're in your 50s, early 60s, I want you to stop putting off visiting a financial advisor that's a fiduciary to you. And what that means is that person is putting your interests in front of their own interests. Most people think that all financial advisors do that like a physician would be or an attorney, but it turns out that's not the case. So I want you to think about uh, visiting with a financial advisor so you know where you're at you can talk about what your goals are and what's the best way to achieve that goal and find out how far away you are from your goal. You might be a lot closer than what you think 
and it would be a shame to miss any of those, any of the, the younger years and what I call the youth of your senior years, just because you didn't know. You were already there, you could retire now, or you're a lot closer than you think. And related to that, I did a video related to this, which is five reasons to retire as soon as you can. Thanks for watching this one, and I'll see you in that one. Bye-bye.